Hello, sir. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. You? I'm hanging in there. It's a little cold and I'm a little tired, but you know, such yeah. is such is the world. Um, December in New York. I'm should be used to it by now. It's only been right. 36 years. Um, I I got such a kick out of everyone in in the film when I saw it at Telluride, but I think you especially because there's such a sense of play and such a different kind of tone you're putting forward with the character while still being a riot. I mean, it is a guy who farts out of his mouth for lack of a better term, but okay. there's just, there's something about watching you play the role where it, it's like a kid in a candy store. There's just, huh. I can tell you're having such a great time. So I'm, obviously you want to, you want to do this, but how do you make sure you're having the fun? Cause it is still, you know, repetition and, and work. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, I love being an actor and I'm working with good people and I'm given this beautiful set to work with, this beautiful screenplay. All the elements are there. Um, for my character, there's a level of repression, but there's also a kind of wit. And um, one of the things that guided me, you know, in thinking about it and approaching this was when I, I, I felt like the writer that the novel is uh, that the film uh, the, that wrote the novel that the film is uh, the screenplay is based on or taken from anyway. Um, there's a lot of him in my character. Okay. And uh, so I watched videotapes of him and he was a very witty guy. Um, he always had a kind of mischievous, uh, a mischievousness to him and a uh, uh, very, uh, perverse sense of humor. So that stayed with me. But I didn't think so much about uh, uh, the humor or that mischievous mischievousness. Um, but I was just happy to be in that world. So. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, you can you can tell. And I think that, that it also comes with, the, I think, having put in the years and, and being in, you know, at this point, almost every kind of set, giant sets, small sets, movies that cost money that is absurd movies where you're like uh, that sandwich is probably the same as the butt production budget you, you you've done it all and i think knowing what works knowing what doesn't but also then coming up to a set like this i was talking to the writer to tony and saying he said he just wandered around he's like we were in lisbon it's like a 45 minute set to walk around that sense of this is new i imagine right. it is is the fuel at this point it is uh, well you know the 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 set that I mostly worked in was the house, yeah. um, my house. And it had it was so rich with detail that when you had downtime, you would just uh, sit around. And uh, I enjoyed looking at all the objects and taking some of the books out of the library. And, and inside those books would be actual diagrams, you know, medical diagrams and things that really pertain to the story. So it was crazy. How, how much detail there was and how much thought was given to the design. And that, of course, helps you because it articulates a world that really tells you that not only the tone, but tell, it, it, it's just like in, in life, you know, where we uh, react to situations and uh, environments. And this is a very full-on, very complete world that really tells you how to behave. Oh, hundred percent. And I think what you said earlier about the the wit of the character and, and of the author is so true. I I forget the exact line, but the when Margaret Qualley's character is doing something, you simply oh, she's a genius. Just that like dismissive wit is was I think maybe like the perfect distillation of this character. How do I show like I miss Bella, but also I'm kind of a dick, but also I have to be the smartest man in the room. It was the perfect <laughs> comeback. Ah, oh, good, good. I'm glad you appreciated that. I also. I also like the very last sentence that he says toward the end of the movie. It's beautiful and yeah. uh, expresses um, something very important. I, I, I won't say it because it's kind of a spoiler. It's uh, uh, out of context. It's a pretty prosaic, but it's a, uh, it's very um, beautiful line. Yeah, well, beautiful, text, uh, beautiful text in this movie. Uh, Tony did a wonderful job because the, the book has a lot of the elements, a lot of elements that are in, the film, but it's very different. For example, you open up the book and you're first listening to Max McCandles. Uh, 
Rami's character because there's many different narrators and Bella isn't at the center. And they knew very early on that they wanted to put Bella at the center, correctly so. And uh, it's just a beautiful screenplay. 100%. And I think that was telling Tony, like, sort of the genius to me is, especially when she's out in the world, there's never a moment where they stop to like showcase, oh, now she's able to do this, or now she's aware of, it's all in situations. I, I, I keep coming back to when she kind of discovers prostitution, the idea of like, oh, and the way she puts it together, you're like, oh, I, I can tell because I've been watching the movie where she is, but there's right. never a moment. And I love that that's kind of ingrained in us from you because so much of your section early on is about development and observation and here's what you right. can and can't do. And so you've in a way trained us to watch her in the same uh, way cool. you watch. Cool, yeah, there's not a lot of pointing. It's all kind of experiential. And because she starts out as like, an innocent and also the wisest person because she's a truth teller because she doesn't have all this social conditioning. It's a it's a beautiful um, it's a beautiful construction. It's a beautiful setup for a journey. Oh, yeah. And done in a way that if you even if you've got none of that, even if you're watching it just on a very base level, it's still a riot. It's still fun. It's still crowd pleasing. It's still you know the acting on display. So it's it's in a way that you can get excited about it. In in a ton of different ways, you can hear my dog being excited about it in the background. He, it's just it's one of those things. I think once you're as long as you're on its wavelength, you're you just want it to wash over you, and you you want to almost like look behind you because the movie just exists behind you. Also, nice. I also think when I watch it, sometimes I recognize myself in some of the idiot behavior. You know, uh, you see all the social conventions that we accept as a given. And we yeah. don't challenge. And of course, the beauty of so much of uh, Bella's journey is she challenges those things, not because she has a particular attitude for them, just because they don't make any sense to her, because she hasn't been indoctrinated. She hasn't been um, educated in those things that are not as often based on uh, bad impulses, negative impulses. Oh, yeah, the longer you you exist as a functional adult, the more you just go, I guess this is just what we do. It's fine. I'll, I'll go along with it. It seems to work out for everyone else. And I love the the her going, wait, why do we do this? Like, Bella confused. And very much speaking to, I think, what we kind of feel in our, in our hearts. You walk around, because that's the dirty secret, right? None of us really are adults. We're all just pretending. And you get paid to pretend. That's a little better than the rest of us. But still, she's, she's <laughs> to a thing that... I think really is in our core and, and you get to, you get to watch it and just smile. Good. Yeah. Uh, and, and especially here, you, you're explaining, you're, you're dealing in human emotions, you're dealing in, in the actual humanity. And that's, you know, I think as the more longer you do this, the harder it is to find roles that are asking that, especially when more movies than not are bigger and less interested in the human experience per se. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm still finding plenty of interesting things to do. I will say that, uh, even as I get older. So I think it's it's kind of on the actor too to find uh, of find an approach. It's you, you can't always blame the the setup and the material. Um, you know, cultivate curiosity and and question, question, question. Yeah. And I think someone like you, I think people can follow you and and see that and go, even if you're in a bigger film, let's say, we know, we all know the ones, there's still something going on. But then, oh, wait, Sean Baker's making a movie. Yorgos Lanthimos is making a movie. You can you can watch those and go, I'm really getting the entirety of the acting experience. And who doesn't want to see that, especially one of our best like you. So you right. should be, oh, it's my pleasure. And you should be so proud of everything. It's It's always just... It's a joy to watch you. Thank you so much. That's very kind. Oh, I, 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 uh, that kind of thing gives me energy. I think, okay, I, I, I can keep on going. <laughs> yes, please, keep going. We got we to gotta get your Oscar one of these days. So uh, okay, thank you. And, and thank you for taking the time. All right. Great. Thank you. Nice talking to you. Likewise. Please. My pleasure.